Right, what's up everybody? So, today I'd like to talk to you about Garuda, sorry, not Garuda, Endeavor OS. So, uh, on my previous video I asked you guys, you know, what would you recommend? Uh, out of a select few options obviously, but what would you recommend? And you recommended Endeavor OS. So, um, yeah, I'm very very happy. Thank you guys so much for recommending it. Um, upon initial install, uh, I did change the theme to the dark theme. The standard theme is a little bit bright for me. And then I started installing maps. So using Pac-Man is fairly straightforward, fairly simple. I have used it in the past. And um, what's nice about Endeavor is it comes with an AUR helper installed called Yay. And Yay is quite powerful in the sense that a lot of the commands are, or the parameters I should say is, is the same as Pac-Man. And What's more is uh, you can actually update both Pac-Man or, or official repositories as well as AUR repositories using Yay, which I found super helpful. So you literally just type Yay and hit enter and it does its thing. That being said, um, the gain on this mic is way too high. Sorry if the audio is a little bit crispy. Um, well, not crispy, but like just overly loud my apologies for that but um yeah so very very nice i love it thank you guys so much and um i'll just show you a few things that i've done uh, to my machine um a few packages i've installed so uh not too much that i've installed i've installed a few uh, office things from LibreOffice, uh, ghostwriter um, gimp inkscape you know dark table that type of stuff as well as uh, Caden Live. I think I've installed Caden Live. If I haven't, I will be installing it um, uh, as I use that. And from the AUR, I've installed a few packages as well. Um, one includes OpenBoard. If you don't know what OpenBoard is, it's, it's super nice. If you do sort of like online meetings where you need to write stuff, or if you do online tutoring like I do, um, go for it. It's, it's a super cool project. Uh, works really, really well. It even has dual monitor support. Um, and I actually use it in conjunction with Discord to, you know, stream what I'm doing to my students. So it works really well. That being said, um, gaming, it just feels way snappier. Now, I am on the latest and greatest kernel. I did also install the LTS kernel, um, which is actually on the top of the list in Grub. So I've, I've gone and I've grabbed Grub Customizer. I believe that's in the official repositories, so you don't have to use the AUR for that. The Grub, the, uh, Grub hyphen customizer it would be the package you want to install. Um, it's quite a powerful tool that allows you to, you know, edit a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but the, my main reason for using it was just to change what my preferred uh, boot thing is, because I don't want to boot LTS. I actually want to boot the running release, and then if I run into issues, then I can manually, you know boot into LTS. So that's what I basically use it for. I also reduced the five second timer to three seconds just to speed things up a little bit. I am on an SSD so overall it's quite fast but hey might as well shave two seconds off the boot time. What else? What else? Oh yes mounting a, a internal storage drive. So um, it's not the easiest thing and I don't know why but a lot of the partition managers or disk managers that we get these days they don't make it easy for a newcomer to really install or, or mount a internal storage drive so in the past i have had luck with that i know how to edit the fstab files but um i don't really feel too comfortable or confident doing that yet so i do prefer using a, a gui to do that but um you know you, you can run into some issues booting and then you need to know how to fix it so what I did was I used KDE Partition Manager to uh, wipe my storage drive clean because I, I wanted to do that anyways as well as uh, put a new partition table it had windows and stuff on it so I was like you know get rid of all this nonsense and um, I used it to set the mount point and it updated the FDAP file but what the KDE Partition Manager does is it it puts the line on top of the file instead of amending it at the bottom. Um, I'm not sure if it would be possible for the devs to tell it to amend rather than slap the line up at the top. 
but hey so what that does is um, if you're trying to mount your storage drive to your main to a folder on your main drive but it's but the the it's it comes first in the FDAP file and oftentimes you run into a, a, an error while booting because it's trying to mount the drive but there's no way to mount it to because it hasn't it hasn't actually mounted the drive that you're mounting it to something like that um, if you know a little bit more about that please comment below and let me know but basically all I did was I took the 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 line that KDE partition manager put into the FDAP file and I moved it down um, and what I also added the specifically telling FSTAB that or, or the system that it is uh, BTRFS because the uh, KDE partition, man partition manager also didn't do that um, and I believe I added another I added auto um, as well as the defaults because the defaults there KDE partition manager adds defaults the default flag but I also added the auto flag because I just wanted to add to, to mount automatically when I boot because I'm going to be installing all my Steam games there and all that stuff. I don't want to have to mount the drive manually and then open Steam. So I just want everything to work. I'm also going to be throwing a lot of my documents and downloads and, and stuff onto that drive as well with, with some links that I have um, in my main folders as you can see here. And yeah, that was about it. So just be careful when you're mounting storage de devices um, that's internal. Um, some of you might want to mount them automatically. Some of you don't want to mount, mount it automatically. Then you can just add the no auto flag. But just be careful when you do that. So after I've set all of that up, um, I just carried on installing some stuff that I needed, some games. I started testing, playing around. And what I found was that recording with OBS using the software encoder on this new kernel, I found that it doesn't degrade performance in my games as much as it used to back on the older kernels in Manjaro. Um, and I'm pretty sure that's because of the new AMD optimizations that we've been having because apparently there was a workaround in the kernel for, for older AM CPUs that still apply to the newer ones but it was actually redundant it wasn't required so it actually caused a little bit of a, a bottleneck or something so that seems to have really eased up um, the whole system just feels more snappier CPU usage is, is more consistent you know it's not just jumping up all over the place so yeah I think it's it definitely helped and worked um, I will be trying the AMF encoder again as well as the VARP encoder on my AMD card um, in the future but for now I'm just going to stick to software as that is what's working at the moment but hey um, so here's some gameplay footage you can see here that I've got Mango HUD installed. Now, I did not use G overlay or Go overlay or however you want to pronounce it. I didn't want to install it because it's got additional dependencies and stuff like that. I'm just, with this install, I'm going to try and keep my system clean. I'm going to try my best to keep my system clean. If you have any recommendations to just keep your system running smoothly and clean and clutter free, please let me know because I'm that type of person who just starts fiddling around with stuff and messing around with stuff and then, you know, six months down the line, there's just folders and apps and packages installed that you know is super redundant and it just gets yeah it gets crazy so i'm really gonna try and um, be more organized um on this install so if you have any recommendations let me know but what was i talking about oh yeah go overlay so i decided not to use go overlay but i did want to configure a global mango hud because i just i play various different types of games you know and all of them have their own heads-up display and different information in different corners and I didn't want to fiddle with Mango HUD on a per application basis I just wanted one thing that sort of works all the time so I made it very transparent so it's top left corner but it's very transparent I can read it in most games um, if the contrast isn't high enough I'll just turn my character you know or I'll open the, the, the pause menu whatever if I need to see information just to just to get it but for the most part I can I can read it perfectly fine in game and as you can see here on Fishing Planet um, I can actually see my Mango HUD information as well as the game information in that corner because it gives you quite a bit of information in that corner and um, you'll also notice that I have a game mode indicator it tells me whether game mode is on or off that's something you have to install is the feral game mode it's just called game mode the package is just game mode um, so you have to install that and and 
in your games where you where you on Steam anyways on the launch options when you have Mango HUD you just next to it you have space game mode run and then your your percentage command percentage and you're good to go um, so it's very easy game mode to install and to and to activate for for your games and what that does is it just it just optimizes your games a little bit for those of you who don't know um, not your games per se but your system so it gives priority to the CPU for that game it bumps up your CPU governor to performance or something similar like that um, you know it does a few optimizations in the in the back end that just helps it just run a little bit better you know it just gives your game a little bit more system resources if that makes sense um, but anyways I will also have a media player indicator on my Mango HUD setup because a lot of times I'll be playing a game and I'll be listening to music in the background and it's just nice to to see what's playing I mean I do have a separate monitor but I don't always have the media player open on that monitor um, so I have that set up and I have a massive clock on my second monitor um, but oftentimes it's blocked by another window such as OBS or Steam while I'm playing a game so I have the system clock in Mango HUD as well so I can keep track of the time um, I think it's important that we take care of our bodies and take care of our eyes so it's important to have a clock somewhere while you're playing a game because oftentimes you can just get so involved and you can just sit and play for hours and you don't realize that you need to stretch you don't realize that like three or four hours have passed and you need to stretch or you need to give your eyes a break remember your eyes with a monitor it, it actually uses a muscle to to focus that closely so you need to look away every 20 minutes or so um, you need to look away so that that muscle can relax and and uh, you know just just relax a little bit so that it doesn't get as overused and uh, that will actually help um, keep your eyesight especially your long distance eyesight um, in the future in the long run it can also help alleviate headaches if you get headaches whilst gaming or working in front of the computer it can also alleviate headaches that's actually how I discovered it to begin with because um, I was homeschooled for a while and uh, man I was getting headaches so we went to, to the optometrist and it was it was terrible Righto, anyways, so my camera cut out there for some reason, um, but I see we, we are over 12 minutes already of me just ranting about stuff and talking about stuff, so I'm going to end it here. If you'd like to see how I set up my Mango HUD without GoVillair and, um, you know, how I set up some other things, please let me know in the comments below and uh, maybe I'll do a video about it. So, also, thank you guys for liking, commenting and subscribing on the previous video. Um, I did get quite a few extra subscribers since that video and on that video. Um, but, please, on this video, can you guys help me get to, let's, let, let's call it 300. Let's say 300 subscribers, not 300 additional subscribers, but just get to a total of 300. That would be great. Thank you so much, have a good day, and uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye.